You know the clip by now. This one. We want to make sure that we really stick the landing with trials. It's important that this doesn't go out half-baked. This clip set the stage and the tone for what was to come. An underwhelming return of Trials of Osiris that had players leaving to never return, not even three weeks in. Even with the changes on the horizon, the game mode is in a state of disrepair. And we predicted it on this channel right at the very beginning. I'm embarrassed at how marvellously that video has aged. Every single time Bungie has talked about PvP since Trials was reintroduced, that clip gets brought up. Every time a new cheetah clip gets circulated, that clip gets brought up. When the Hake Casino was a thing, that clip alone did better numbers than anything Ryan Reynolds released in the past year. But this is the internet. There are goldfish out there with better memory and attention spans. So how has one clip managed to live so long in the minds of Destiny players? It's very simple. Nothing else has since come close to the ironic impact that it has had over the last 17 months or so. Because we haven't had any meaningful communication on PvP since then outside of balance passes and sandbox updates. Until last week. And for that, I owe you an apology. When Destiny 2 assistant game director Joe Blackburn made his Twitter thread, I got caught up in the immediate emotion. Being an eternal optimist at heart, I interpreted the news as good news and made a video within two hours of it going live. I struck a fairly positive tone, but it was hasty, rushed, emotional. Not the sort of thing that I normally indulge in. I should have known better. This channel is known for think pieces that are well reasoned and well put together. So consider this video redo. Let me do what I do best, which is look at the big picture and make sense of it all. And the big picture is this. Where PvE players get three hot meals a day in the form of a mountain of communication concerning new activities, new economies, and new systems, PvP players usually get one slice of bread for an entire season at a time, consisting of playlist weapons and sandbox changes. After taking some time to reflect on everything, I've come to the conclusion that whilst the communication was direct, positive, and exactly the kind of thing we've needed for some time, it's exposed some long-held suspicions about the way Bungie have treated, or rather haven't treated, PvP this entire time. But it doesn't matter in the end. The truth is, no matter what Bungie did or said, it was always going to be a no-win situation. And the sad part is, they could have avoided it entirely. Let me make this clear. With this video, I am in no way condoning any toxicity you may want to send towards Bungie or any of its developers. You're a player just like me. We have a shared interest, and like the last reflection piece where we talked about our community, we approached it from the position of a concerned friend more than anything else. So let's have a conversation about this respectfully and intelligently. By the way, if you like these sorts of thoughtful pieces, be sure to leave a like on the video and join the Discord server in the description below. We have in-depth conversations all the time there. Just this morning, we talked about mouse and keyboard versus controller in Destiny 2, and nobody threatened to cancel each other. It was amazing. Anyways, back to this video. Let's go back to that thread. We already made a video going over everything in full, and I suspect you already know what's what. But for the folks that are new to the channel or are returning back after some time away, here's a brief summary of the main points. Crucible remains an integral part of Destiny 2's plans for the future. Season 15 will see the launch of a revamped Trials of Osiris experience and a fix to three peaking. The first half of 2021 has been spent working on the foundation of a new Crucible, and new teams are being spun up for maps and modes. Season 16 will see two Destiny 2 maps return. Season 17 will see one brand new map. Season 18 will see a remastered Destiny 1 map return, Rift will return in 2022, multiple brand new modes are incoming for 2022, and ongoing monitoring of the Crucible ecosystem will begin after the Trials revamp. Assistant Game Director Joe Blackburn also said that the goal of the teams working on the Crucible was to become consistent, so you can learn to expect things from every release. Though by his own admission, it will take time. There was mention of the engine overhaul as well, with all current Destiny 2 maps being hand-ported with Beyond Light's release, which would explain why we saw no Europa map as a result of this work, plus the pandemic and the whole remote work situation which, if my timelines are correct, would have arrived right in the middle of Beyond Light's production. That being said, the reaction to this tweet thread was explosive. It was 
passionate, emotional, and at times, borderline toxic. I had quite a few of my own subscribers telling me to stop covering Destiny 2, which was particularly shocking to read considering the ethos of this channel is to help people. As I've said, I'm an eternal optimist at heart, and you can always rely on me to find the good angle first. Sometimes there is no good angle, and you have to call a pile of feces a pile of feces, though in this case there were certainly some positive takeaways. It's only when you contextualize it in the body of everything does it start to become an issue. So, what was the positive? It's obvious. And perhaps because it's obvious, it's not satisfying for a lot of people. It's the fact that we even got communication to begin with, and it came from the man most visibly in charge of Destiny 2. Intentions were communicated, plans were laid out, the specifics were scant, as they should be given the nature of game development. Bungie don't typically reveal or share anything until they're absolutely certain it can deliver them. Which is why it was incredibly comforting to me that the man in charge saw fit to finally break the silence on PvP. It meant that something was being worked on, and it wasn't forgotten completely. That the words that he spoke in the Road to the Witch Queen blog post back in February weren't empty. It was nice to get acknowledgement of any sort, and to have some intentions laid out for the next year to year and a half. But on the other hand, it was nice to get acknowledgement of any sort. Acknowledgement of any sort. That's what it came down to. Shadowkeep was the last time we saw any concrete updates to PvP in the form of Fragment, a new map, and the competitive playlist rework. Shadowkeep was 22 months ago. One of my favourite morbidly depressing novelty Twitter accounts has been Destiny Crucible. The person in charge of this account every day has been counting down the days till a new original map. As of the writing of this script, the current count is this. 679 days since new original maps, which was Fragment, 518 days since new reprised maps, which was Cauldron, Exodus Blue and Anomaly for Season of the Worthy, 273 days since losing 11 maps, Beyond Light, 52 days until two years without a new original map. So after all this time, all this neglect, it's no wonder I struck a stupidly happy tone in my initial reaction video. I felt like one of those dogs you see in videos that just saw its owner come home after being away on active service for a while. I was ecstatic, I was beside myself, I didn't know what to do with myself. In the days that have passed and some time away from YouTube, perspective has settled in. And I'm not angry. I just have one burning question. Bungie's nature with communication to changes across the board in PvE and PvP is a little haphazard at best. Most of the time it's just text on screen and it's hard for the average player to quantify what this means. As a result, there's a whole subgenre within the Destiny 2 space that creators operate in to explain a lot of the perspective changes and try and effectively translate what that means for the state of the game. Some of us get pretty damn close with our interpretations, but in the absence of a build or a demo video, it's hard to really know for sure. It's largely speculation, and this speculation has the potential to be incredibly positive or virulently negative. With PvP, it is almost always the latter. Remember the recall changes that came with Beyond Light? Twitter lost its collective marbles over that. Many people on YouTube swore off the game entirely in the comment sections underneath TWAB videos covering the changes. What ended up happening was it was largely fine, and actually barely noticeable to begin with. It was much ado about relatively nothing. And people forgot that it was so as they played the game and got to grips with the changes after the update launched. The same cycle is happening right now with the slide nerf, though we don't know how good or bad it will be. I personally am waiting and seeing before passing judgement, but I can already see the outcome being largely the same. A change that looks worse on paper than it actually played out, which got the community up in arms. This text on screen approach has its merits. It is considered far more in depth to show statistics and numbers on the screen and list a whole bunch of bullet points so that the dedicated players can decipher it and generate conversation. TWAB videos are a staple of Destiny 2 YouTube for this reason. But on the other hand, if a change is made or projected to be made with no physical demonstration to show what it looks or feels like, it can lead to a lot of panic, discord and toxicity from player to developer. People largely fear and hate change. And in a diverse looter shooter that encourages individuality, 
When you take away a key ingredient from someone's playstyle identity, there will be a degree of anger that will manifest between the announcement of the change made and the actual playable patch date. For PvP, this is what happens every single time. Fear arises over changes made and how it will affect the Crucible, which is already in a state of neglect. Fear paired with neglect gives rise to anger, and since this anger has no recourse to resolve itself, it settles as resentment. Resentment lingers and resurfaces as the default reaction to any perspective change made for the sake of balance, quality of life, or just simply because Bungie felt like it. When resentment resurfaces, we get more anger. This anger intensifies and settles as resentment to go on top of resentment already there. Now I know there's a legitimate argument here to say if you resent the game and its developer, play a different game. This argument has merit, but it's not relevant to the point I'm trying to make here. Which is that because of the lack of communication and updates to the Crucible, resentment over said inaction is now the default nature of the player base Bungie is attempting to cater to. If they are surprised by the reaction to both the Twitter thread and the sliding nerfs, they need only look back at the two year gap where nothing happened, where promises were made and never kept, like hosting a more frequent Bungie podcast to continually say we're listening with little to no recognition given to common PvP pain points, to see suggestion after suggestion, feedback piece after feedback piece be taken into consideration and in some cases implemented on the PvE side of things, whilst absolutely no action has resulted on the PvP side of things, however unfeasible our suggestions may have been. And when it comes to the Twitter thread specifically, it is full of vagaries and rather loose promises. The goal of that thread was to break the silence and to signal positive intention. But that thread is one bookend of a very long silence. And the other bookend? We want to make sure that we really stick the landing with trials. It's important that this doesn't go out half-baked. If you couldn't before, can you see now why everyone's having a hard time digesting this news? Positive intention can be signaled at any time. And whilst I recognize Bungie are not in the business of speaking on things before they're concrete, I just have to ask, why did it take so long to just talk about PvP? This is the million dollar question that fundamentally set Bungie up to fail the second they decide to shelf plans for better PvP post Shadowkeep. I don't know what happened for sure in this period, but Mr. Blackburn said that they're spinning up new teams for maps and modes and that the foundation for the new Crucible has only been a 2021 thing. To me, I interpret that as confirmation that no long-term developmental resources were afforded to the PvP teams in 2019 or 2020. It wasn't even a thought for Beyond Light, pandemic or not. I may be way off base here, but the track record speaks for itself. It has been an abysmal time to be a PvP fan in Destiny 2. And because of that, no matter how or when they communicated changes to PvP, Bungie were always going to get the reaction they did, and they were always going to lose. I don't blame the community team one bit for this. They are just the messengers. They do an excellent job at a thankless task. I don't even blame Joe Blackburn, because he only started fronting Destiny 2 sometime in 2020, and the problems with the Crucible have predated that. The issue here is that someone at the top has intentionally or not, let this go on for a very, very long time. And as a result of this negligence, like I said in my community video, it's caused the standard of communication between player and developer, and even between fellow players, to degrade to the point where nobody can be civil to each other. The full deconstruction of the civility can be best seen on Twitter and Reddit, forums which put conversation at the forefront. I'd mention Facebook in this argument too, but honestly I've never enjoyed any time I was on there. Some of this lack of civility can be explained away with good old-fashioned passion and enthusiasm, but when your community is up in arms on the regular about changes or, hell, future plans, it does not reflect well on the game. It leads to higher churn rate on revenue, player engagement, and retention. Nobody wants to be part of the proverbial sinking ship, do they? So, where do we go from here? Ultimately, my view hasn't changed too much from my initial video. Everything we talked about is in the past. 
Results will take time to show, and there's somewhat of a timeline here. I'm personally sticking with this game. I still love it dearly, and I've been captivated by the PvE side of things whilst making the odd PvP weapon review here or there. Rocket League and Halo Infinite will scratch my competitive fix for the time being. The only good news of all of this is that just as much as Bungie have a history of being silent and sloppy with the communication, they also have a knack of doing what they say. The execution can and probably will be sloppy given their lack of substantial PvP updates, but they will deliver on what they set out to do. So if they say they want to be consistent, I believe them. I just hope they see this video and take note of just how we got to this point, and that they endeavour to be better across the board moving forward. Action expresses priorities, and I'll be eagerly awaiting to see what the trials rework has in store for us. Only time will tell if they can successfully build trust again with their PvP player base, because right now, that trust is well and truly shattered. Thank you for listening. Consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts on Destiny 2. I'm Ascendant Nomad, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.